What of the many voids and found in the source? Who guides them here, and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. Upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Our more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul we had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the Void Sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. said that Voidsent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, plane of fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, 
you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the Thirteenth, and humbled the Cloud of Darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. I had a feeling you might say that. Once again, I put my life in your ever-reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single Void Scent will be allowed to threaten Radzat Han, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daymir was overseeing the project. Daymir. Daymir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daymir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum, and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Indeed. Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. In which case... I say we head directly to Charlien. Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. I still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Let us be on our way as well. They are resolved to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by?
If House Damia's notes are to be found anywhere, it will be here. Let us begin. Yes, the Aether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the Great Work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal-stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our 
artificial atoms. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon void scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh umbral calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. And still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomos of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not.
The ruins alone were impressive enough. But I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There is something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the Void's corrupting influence, but I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Good. I see you've been paying attention. As Vritra sent his simulacrum, so too shall we rely on a familiar to bear the brunt of any unpleasant consequences. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm. From river flow and life be born. Water, water, frost and fire! Ready your arms. I fear she's been possessed. Oh, come now. That was adorable. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, Your Excellency? Ah, yes, 
Of course. We should also be wary of void scent slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nadana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. And we are glad for it. Let us begin, shall we? I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side! Thank you, little one. You did well. Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. Reseal the void gate. They're coming through. In the name of Alzadal the Third, I bar this door unto the void. It was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones.
Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world use the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. It was Elidibus, as I recall, who rescued Unakalhai's spirit from his final battlefield. But I wonder if there were others whom the Emissary saved from oblivion. The server. Ciela, wasn't it? And you say she was another of Elidibus's pawns? I see. So Ciela, or rather Silver, was beguiled by the same dreams of heroism as Unicalha. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the Thirteenth is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first, I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh! Yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then.
Hey, Stola! The adjustments are going well, I hope? Tis a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news! I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log, dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. 
it included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless? Heedless even, in your determination. My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion. And not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nabdeen, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days! We are a strong and proud people! We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence! I am grateful for your loyalty, and for your encouragement, and yet... Now you listen to me, Vashan! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together safe and happy and I hope that you and your sister can be together again too
You're saying I should seize this chance. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you, and here I stand failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Radzat Han. My people, I have come to a decision. Vashan will depart Thavne for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry.
Thank <laughs> you.